Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, I'm back with Mike Dupree, who I interviewed a while back, and now he's returned to the channel to showcase and talk about some things he's been up to, some things he's, up, he's going to be doing. And obviously, he was featured in Halloween Kills as a ventriloquist. So he's going to tell you a bit more about that now. So over to you, Mike. <laughs> he, he left me. At, oh, he did not. Stop it now. I want you to behave yourself. That'll be good for a dollar. Good for a dollar. When I was your age, I was good for nothing. <laughs> you still are. All right, calm down. Well, Adam, it's uh, great to be back and uh, good to see you again. And uh, of course, uh, we were in the movie. It's been released. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's uh, been a blockbuster for the most part. Yeah, it's done pretty good. That's what I meant. Jesus criminies. <laughs> yeah, it was a fantastic well, film. I want to say that. It uh, it really pushed the envelope as far as uh, kills and yes. blood and gore. Uh, David Green and uh, Scott Teams, they did a terrific job. Jason Blum, I've mm -hmm. got to <laughs> throw him in there because he's responsible too. But yes. they did a, an outstanding job putting the film together. The editor did an outstanding job as well. But uh, what we've done so far is uh, I've done several music videos, uh, a couple up and coming bands. Uh, I appeared as a ventriloquist and also as myself without uh, Horace. You traitor. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't recognize me without him to uh, <laughs> my right. And for good reason to him, handsome. Yeah, you are. Breath smells. <sighs> oh, my goodness. It smells like garlic. <laughs> that and skunk. Skunk? Yeah, <laughs> guess which end? Oh, I can imagine. Uh, well, anyhow, this little distraction has to stop. I'm going to put you uh, over here so I can actually talk and uh, not have to worry about you getting in trouble. Easy now. <laughs> I got gas. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, anyhow, we've done some music videos. We did a couple pilots, uh, one for Hulu and another for uh, a cable channel. Oh, nice. uh, plenty commercials. I've, uh, I was able to do one right out of the Atlantic City area where I live. So that was uh, pretty nice. And I've done, I think it's about six real estate commercials up in New York City. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed, fingers and legs and toes and everything else I can. They're going to be recording or filming Halloween ends in January. Oh, yes. And I'm hoping that they invite me back. Generally, that's uh, their protocol. If you're in one of their films, they like to bring you back uh, for the other. So hopefully that will be the case. I'm not sure if it will be, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope you come back. It'd be cool to see you again. Yeah, it would be pretty cool. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's uh, certainly life changing as far as uh, being noticed and recognized. And uh, my son, uh, we go out to dinner once in a while. And he's not one that really likes the limelight. He likes to oh, stay yeah. back in the shadows. But uh, <laughs> what has been happening uh there's been quite a few newspaper articles uh about me and appearing in the movie nice. so now i have people coming up to me in the restaurants that we go to <laughs> and they start uh the one lady said you're mike dupree aren't you i saw you in the newspaper and uh i'm going to go out and see that movie i've heard really good stuff about it uh would you sign my place matt and then they of wow. course say well, yeah, I'll, I'll do uh, one better. I've actually got pictures out in my truck that uh, I'll bring in. So oh, I started nice. signing one for her. Then the lady that was sitting behind us said, you're, uh, you got to sign one for me too. And then the waitress comes over. Oh, you're going to give them one and not me. <laughs> but that's, that's your tip for the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that has actually happened probably about 15 to 20 times. Now wow. I actually bring a folder with me that, uh, I have the pictures hidden in there, so it's not like I'm broadcasting that I have them, yeah. but when people approach me in the stores or wherever I happen to be at, I, I have them ready and I'll sign one off for them because I was <laughs> like wow, taking, that's amazing. <clears throat> taking care of uh, all our viewers. But yeah. <clears throat> uh, my time on set with Halloween Kills was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had uh, in, in my whole career. I've been on stage. Yeah, I can for, imagine many years as a ventriloquist for the Tropicana Casino 
And uh, I've done radio most of my life. I was on uh, WOND, 104 MGM, Cool 98.3, uh, 98.6 BHX, and uh, 100.1 Jersey for a while. Uh, so I've been on a lot of radio stations over the years. And, yeah. Uh, that was always, you know, my my main love. And then when I've got uh, hired for the uh, Tropicana, it uh, I thought, well, this is the best it's going to be. And I got to hang out with a, a lot of great comedians, a lot of well-known um, people that travel the country. Gary Delina, John Josephs, um, nice. George Wallace, uh, Carrot Top. I met him a couple of times there. And uh really great guys i've never yeah. ran into anybody that had any kind of one of those egos that you oh yeah, yeah. you hear about um only once in my life uh, did i run into one of those people that were bigger than big and i didn't care for him uh only for the simple fact when he came on backstage where i was at he was really nasty and he was yelling oh. at people and is he well this, known yeah, yeah, he sure is. And I'll tell you this, he just got out of jail not long ago. Oh. And uh, at that point in time, he was real big. Uh, he had a, uh, a show. This goes back to uh, 1985. And uh, I was working at the Harris uh, Casino. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's when I ran into him. And he just was not a nice guy. Uh, he treated Jesus. everybody like trash. And I lost every bit of respect that I ever had for him uh, once I, I saw him, uh, his antics backstage. And even his wife, he treated her horribly. Wow. And, uh, That's crazy. So when he got nailed for what he did to those poor women, uh, it wasn't a surprise to me. I thought, yeah, it's not really a stretch. I know a lot of people across America was like, no, he's such a nice guy. Well, on TV, yeah, he's a nice yeah, guy. Of course. Yeah. But uh, in reality, he, he really isn't. But that was the only wow. nasty experience I ever had with a, a prof professional entertainer. And uh, then fast forward years later, when I started working for Tropicana, and I got to hang out with uh, all these up and comers and then some, you know, real well-known comedians yeah. and never had a bad experience uh, with anybody. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but I've got to say, we might, we, I think we might discuss this when we did the interview, but um, how did you go about getting the role on Halloween? Was it this all an approach um, people about a, a certain role, about the ventriloquist? Yeah, there's a... Uh... A uh, ventriloquist uh, carver, in fact, uh, him right here. Yeah, uh, we call him Red because he's got red hair and a red <laughs> uh, jacket. He's yeah. carved by a friend of mine, Conrad Hartz, and he's down in North Carolina. Okay, and he's been carving for many, many years. He called me up to give me a heads up and said, "There's a movie company that's looking to hire." a ventriloquist that doesn't have a southern accent okay. because uh, my buddy uh conrad he has a southern draw because he's from south carolina ah. obviously and uh he said you might want to give them a call gave me uh the casting director's name number i called and i said yeah just put together a uh, a video you're doing some ventriloquism we basically want to see uh <clears throat> you know how well you 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 do on tape yeah. and uh also to see how well your your lip your your ventriloquism skills are and i said yeah sure so i submitted it uh took the video right in my living room and uh, did my little bit of an act and uh never thought i'd hear anything back yeah, next man. thing i know they're calling me back saying would you be able to do a little longer act and uh, try a little singing and i said sure so I did that, submitted that, and she said that we have about 150 other people, but we have you narrowed down to the top 10. Wow. And um, the, the director and producer, um, and it's called Mob Rules is what they told me the name of the film was, which in England back in, I believe it was the 80s, of uh, mid 80s, maybe there was a movie produced there called Mob Rules. And, oh, okay. uh, I remember seeing that and I thought, 
well, it wasn't really that good of a film. I don't know why they're remaking it, but okay, I'll, I'll try for it. And I thought, I don't know what a ventriloquist has to do with mob rules because it was, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, hooligans having a good time or whatever, yeah. uh, <clears throat> if I remember the movie correctly. So I uh, submitted and I said, sure, I'll, uh, I'll Zoom call. Them. Next thing I know, when my time was to Zoom them, I'm sitting there in my living room again. Uh, I see the names start to pop up on the screen. I see David Gordon Green, Danny McBride, Malika Cod, uh, Scott uh, 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 Scott Breams, and uh, I thought, my goodness, this is something bigger than I am even expecting. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, they just did uh, Halloween 2018. And uh, Scott Teams, I'm sorry. And yeah. uh, I said, this is a lot bigger than I'm thinking. And I'm starting to get nervous now. And they all <laughs> pop up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, they introduce each uh, themselves. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, what did I get myself into? So they said, can you sing the song uh, Shave and Cream? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Because they had given me a heads up prior to uh to sing that in one of the yeah. previous videos so i did and then they said can you do a little ad lib with it and uh that's when i came in with what's in the movie i don't know if it's uh, okay to say the cuss words or not yeah uh, sure in your pop podcast but uh anyhow uh horace which is my uh character uh says i think i'll break off with my girlfriend uh, her antics are queer i'll admit each time I say, darling, I love you, she tells me that I'm full of shit, shit, shit. And I just ad-libbed that, and they ah. started laughing. So when I heard them laugh at that, I figured, you know what? I may have a good chance here <laughs> at this. <clears throat> and then when it concluded, uh, the casting director, everybody went off, and he said, okay, thank you very much. You did very well, and uh, we'll be letting you know. He says, you may or may not hear from us, but uh, if we're interested, you'll, you'll hear back. And about a week later, I get the call back and they said, can you be in North Carolina between the 16th and 20th of September? And that was back in 2019. Yeah. I said, absolutely. In fact, if it was in Ketchikan, Alaska, I'd have been there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then we took care of the paperwork and signed the contracts and uh, confidentiality. So I couldn't yeah. come out and say what was going on or anything of that nature. Uh, in the movie, which I never would anyhow. So did you find something. out at that point that it was Halloween? Not until I signed all the papers right. and they sent me a script. Ah. And ev even the script said uh, mob rules on it. And it had my name watermarked across it. And as I'm looking at the characters, I'm saying the shape, Michael Myers, <laughs> uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah. uh, her character, um and Lori strode and I, I said this is this is halloween and i said i don't know why they're calling it mob rules but i later found out that every production every film and production uses a production name and title so when they hire people they don't know that uh, it's going to be for a certain movie or yeah. what have you it's a secretive type of thing and uh, there's other reasons behind it uh, as well, any production title, but uh, it was interesting to find that out. Yeah, of course. And, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I knew pretty quick that that's what it was. And I was just on a natural high for the next few weeks. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so obviously you're in the bar scene. So I gather you got to interact with obviously everyone in that scene. Yes, everybody was there. Um, even, uh, well, uh, I had to go, as soon as I got into North Carolina, I went to Screen Gems Studios to yeah. get fitted for the outfit that I had, because obviously it's not something I would normally wear. Yeah. yeah. That blue checkered jacket. <laughs> <laughs> but Emily Gosher, who is a great, I mean, she is... Uh, wardrobe through and through she's created everything for that movie from uh michael myers jumpsuit to, which was basic but uh to everything else yeah and, uh she uh she's the one that came out with that and they had me try on several different 
versions of what I had on. Oh, and okay. uh, that was the the final one. And she put that on me. I started laughing. I said, oh my goodness, who would wear such a thing? <laughs> I said, it makes me look like a, a seventh grade uh, science teacher or something. And, uh, and when she heard me say that, she says, yep, that's the one. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, but of wow. course, uh, <clears throat> Horace, uh, he, uh, he's my ventriloquist figure. I actually own him. So how he was dressed, uh, well, how he's dressed here. Uh, I'll pick him up real quick. That's how he's dressed uh, in the film. Uh, oh, that was okay. my clothing. The only thing that uh, wasn't, didn't come with him with the was this tie right here he had another tie that i had on him yeah but what they did in the scene emily gave him a matching tie to what i wore so uh -huh. they used the tie out and uh so i uh i just left the uh when the scenes were done uh, yeah with the tie on him i never changed it back nice uh, a little but, gift from the halloween set yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh <clears throat> excuse me but when I was there, uh, James Jude Courtney was getting fitted for his uh, jumpsuit and they were yeah. finishing some stuff. And then I saw a bunch of the other characters. Plus at Screen Gems, uh, the Myers house I saw and they had oh, nice. like the whole neighborhood where Little John and Big John's house was, yeah. which was the Myers house. Uh, that was all facades in this huge studio. And it looked like a giant streets uh, scene, but it was all um, like the foam board and you could walk up to the side of the house and shake the whole thing because it was oh, just really? a, a frame with that foam board, which wow. was real lightweight, but it looked like a, you know, a real house of obviously in a yeah. neighborhood, the same thing. But uh, I got to, uh, when we were filming my part, it was about three days altogether we spent on set. Uh, ours was actually filmed in the Rusty Nail, which is in Wilmington, right on, I think, Fifth Street. And uh, they provided a limo. They'd pick us up in the morning. And the uh, triplets, the Levesque triplets, which, that were also in my scene, real great ladies. Oh, my gosh. They were uh, like my daughters there on the stage. Um, but, uh, they would pick us up in the morning in a limo, drive us to what they call the honey wagons, which yeah. are the, uh, dressing rooms, mobile dressing rooms. And, um, then we'd go into our prospective rooms and, uh, we'd get dressed. And then next to me was, uh, uh they would have your name or your character written on the door. Yeah. And next to me was Tivoli. And I was wondering who Tivoli was, but later on. Uh, a guy showed up and um, I had read the script, obviously knew who the, the character was, but I didn't know him. And then I see this short guy with uh, crazy hair. He was getting uh, makeup uh, test or whatever. And uh, we got talking and uh, he says, yeah, I play a crazy guy. And I said, yeah, I read that. And he was such a super nice guy and he was in the music and unfortunately, I later found out he never lived long enough to see the uh, completion of the movie. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because we filmed in 2019, and because of COVID, uh, it was supposed to be released in September, uh, yeah, October yeah. of uh, 2020, wow. yeah. and it got put off to 21. He passed away in, I believe it was May of 2021. So. Oh, wow. He never got a chance to see the impact that his part actually played in the movie. And it's a shame because he was such a nice guy. And wow. I enjoyed uh, spending a lot of time with him uh, right there at the dressing rooms. Um, was he the uh, mental patient that everyone thought was Michael Myers? Yes. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ross Bacon is the actor that uh, portrayed the character Tivoli, who was uh, the crazed patient. Um <clears throat> But wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was a bummer to find out that he wasn't able to see the film because every one of us, uh, Carmelo McNeil, Michael Smallwood, we all kept in contact. We still keep in contact. Uh, they play the sexy doctor and the nurse. And uh, all right, yeah. And we were all like chopping at the bit, waiting for this movie to get released. And then when the COVID came along, 
and they had to put it off for a year. We're like, oh no, what a yeah. bummer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean. <clears throat> but uh, getting back to your original question about uh, spending time uh, with the whole cast that was in my scene, uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> great guy. I'll tell you, he's he's like a kid at heart. He, uh, he? <laughs> he's a real good guy, real athletic too. In fact, uh, he would spend a lot of time uh, shadow boxing on stage, and he was real athletic wow. uh, and real good guy. Um, Nancy Stevens, who played the original nurse yeah. in the original Halloween, she was in that scene and uh, super lady. Uh, she was she was like the mother everybody's mother uh because she'd walk over and start talking to you and uh it, it was just so nice it, you wouldn't know that any of these actors or actresses were uh you know big stars or yeah or what have you but, but i didn't see any egos uh whatsoever uh, Kyle Richards, she was also in the scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, real nice lady. Robert Longstreet. My goodness, what a nice guy he was. Uh, a lot of times on, on sets when you're around uh, actors and actresses, you know that you, you want to, um, you know, give them their, their space because uh, a lot of times, you know, with memorizations of their scenes, they're going over in their head and uh, it's not good to... Uh, you know, bother them at all or, or strike up a conversation uh, because they could be going over the lines. Yeah, yeah. Me, mine was, you know, I sang a song. I did my regular act, which a lot of it wound up on the cutting room floor. But uh, these people had long scenes. Yeah. Robert Longstreet, my goodness, he was striking up conversations with me. We were talking about all kinds of stuff. And then the minute they action, he snapped to it and he read it uh, perfectly oh, wow. as if he had been doing it his entire life. He is such a professional and really nice guy too. Cause uh, you know, I enjoyed spending our time together and then we all uh, ate together. Cause they had, uh, like I said, we were filming ours at the rusty nail. Yeah. Uh, most of the shots, uh, the bar scene obviously was in the bar and uh, it was a real bar that they had shut down. Rusty nail is uh, really notorious for being a jazz bar in oh, Carolina. Okay. It's well known all on the East Coast, all the rock and roll bands. Um, my cousin's Billy Walton, who goes to, he plays in England all the time as well. He's oh, a great wow. Briton. Nice. Uh, but he has a band. And I struck up a conversation with the manager and they said, you're related to Billy? We know Billy. He's like, <laughs> and uh, he's down here all the time. But uh, they also filmed, obviously, the blood and gore parts in uh, Screen Gem Studio, which was right across town from the oh, okay. Rusty Nail where we were at. And then the outside, the alley scenes were filmed right around the back of the Rusty Nail. And nice. it was uh, pretty neat how they, they tied that whole area together. And even the playground was only a few blocks away. Oh, was it? Uh, oh, yeah. Wow where they had the honey wagons the trailers yeah is right at that park so uh you know if we wandered out of our uh, dressing rooms we could walk right over to the swing set or the park right there oh wow and uh it was pretty neat and uh <clears throat> i you know i gotta give credence and credit to uh all the extras um oh, yeah <laughs> Those people, they certainly don't get paid enough for what they do because the bar scene, you can't have a single noise in the whole bar when you're recording. So everybody has to be silent. So it's a bar scene. Everybody is yeah. making believe they're making noise and joking. They're not making a sound because it has to be totally silent. And um, they, that, that means they also have to turn the air conditioners off and it was in September. And anybody that knows anything about uh, North Carolina in September, it's probably one of the hottest months. <laughs> so it was upwards with all the lighting that they had. Oh, it of was course. like 110 degrees. While they were shooting, uh, they had to turn off all the air and everything else so there was no noise. But in between shots, they had these commercial refrigerator units that had tubes that would uh, blow inside the uh, the bar. So oh, okay. in between when they said cut, 
these things would come on, it would blow Arctic cold air. So it'd give you some relief for a while. <laughs> and even though <clears throat> uh, the bar scene was at night, it was actually filmed at 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, really? They, they had uh, tents over top of the windows and a big canopy black across the front so that uh, no light would go in and it would look like it was uh, dark out. Oh, but, cool. But they did that during the day. And then there were a few night scenes. <clears throat> yeah, when they, they go outside filmed. to yeah, after, Michael, and, after Michael, yeah. Yep, and that was filmed about, uh, I'd have to look at the call sheet, about three in the morning, so it was pretty late. So there's no <laughs> traffic noises, you know, because there was uh, a highway that wasn't far away. And um, so, you know, all the extras and all, they came back at, at night to film uh, that that part but I, like i said i feel bad for all the extras everything they got put through because in between scenes they would pull the extras out and they were put held in another area uh where they had uh, food and drink or whatever uh, oh, okay and then the supporting cast which was us we got to go to another area but, but when i was doing my scene and i'm not known as a singer even though i did sing the uh <laughs> the shaven cream song yeah i had uh earwigs in my ear and they're like little teeny hearing aids that you can't see on camera and only i could hear the music playing oh okay so they uh they had two mics on stage one for horace uh and then one for me in the front but they actually didn't work they weren't oh. operable they were just there for show they, the real mics were actually inside. They were called rice mics and they were inside my shirt. And those poor extras that were sitting in front of me, all those people that they brought in um, as the audience, all they could hear was my voice. They couldn't hear any of the music. So all they were hearing is, I think I'll break off with my girlfriend. And we only did it. And it was, uh, I did it uh, twice is all, all we had wow. to do. And then it was a take, but those poor people had to sit there listening <laughs> to my voice because I sang the whole song because we didn't know how they were going to cut it up. Oh. And then I also did my act, which is a pretty risky act. Like uh, I say, yeah, so how's your sex life? I hold my own. <laughs> I guess with a face like that, you have to uh, screw you. But uh, that actually got cut out for time's sake, which I understand the uh, you know, it's their movie. And uh, yeah. I was certainly satisfied with how much of the movie I actually made it in. Because if you watch the uh, Levescu triplets on stage when they're singing, if you look over to the right, you'll see me and Horace sitting on the sidelines waiting to go on stage uh, on the open mic night. So, oh. But uh, <clears throat> so I made it throughout quite a few of the scenes yeah. before I, I went on stage. But <laughs> It was so cool to see how they actually filmed that. Like I said, every person, uh, every little scene inside the bar was shot separate and there was no noise except for the people that were talking and all the bar sounds, the clicking of the drinks and the glasses and people talking were all done in post-production. So oh, really? it sounded like it was a normal, you know, kind of bar with all the noise and music yeah. playing in the background. And that just wasn't the case. Uh, what it was, was everybody was silent and even when i was on stage and you see robert longstreet and everybody's standing at the bar uh yeah and they were talking i was doing a pantomime i could hear myself singing in my ear they did the playback and i'm just doing pantomime with uh, horace like i'm actually doing my regular act i'm just oh, mimicking what i already did yeah. uh but that way it could flawlessly be seen together and uh that's that's why you'll see a, a you know a real long shot of me i'm still on stage yeah you know doing my uh my act or whatever but it was so interesting how they they f they filmed that whole thing and i picked up on a, a lot of neat techniques they did and uh david gordon green was probably the best director i ever sat in front of the most professional anyhow he uh <laughs> he was he would be able to get stuff out of people that uh, normally you wouldn't be able to get yeah uh, with him nice that's amazing to hear i'm glad that you had such a good time on the set as well that's always the main thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah they definitely took real good care of us that way and uh 
uh, like I said, everybody it seemed like we were one big family. Everybody uh, knew their part and everybody was prepared. They knew their lines. They knew what they were to do. And it was bang, 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 bang. And they got it done real quick. I was surprised. And then when I found out how long it took them to finish the whole movie, it was within a month. It, oh, it really? wasn't, yeah, it wasn't long at all. Wow. Uh, that's amazing. It, yeah, it was amazing how quick they had it. And then they uh, edited it. And uh, I live up in New Jersey, which is, uh, uh, you know, about, I think about 10 hours away from Wilmington, North Carolina. And oh, wow. uh, they needed to cut the shit, shit, shit out of my act for television. Because when it goes on television or certain videos, um, <clears throat> Certain video markets uh, overseas, you can't use any cuss words. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then <clears throat> they had me do uh, uh, ADR, which is a uh, separate recording. So I went up to Harbor Studios, uh, Harbor Movies uh, in New York City. They sent me up yeah. there to uh, do the uh, voice recording. So uh, I got to see myself on a huge large screen TV and oh, nice. then I had the headphones on and I could hear everything. And then what I had to do was to actually sing along. And then where I say, shit, 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 I had to replace it with bowel movement or I stepped in a big pile of politics oh. and uh, I had to do that. So when uh, certain markets get to see it, it, it may have shit, shit, shit or it could say bowel movement, or it could say politics. Oh, wow. um, but uh, that was politics was something that I came up with. Uh, I thought that was fitting. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, we'll just have to wait and see when it comes on regular TV, yeah. uh, what, what version it is they actually use. Nice, it's really interesting to hear that, because not a lot of films would go to the extent of making sure it ticks other cultures and countries um, rules and stuff so that's cool to her yeah they were real sensitive about that and uh <laughs> they uh i mean they the the culture today um you you want to have a mix because yeah. you know everybody in the party is what makes the party and i don't care if you're white black gay straight it doesn't matter uh you know it's great to have everybody on board and yeah, absolutely. They, they were. And I mean, they're definitely equal opportunity employers and there were so many great people uh, on set, but uh, yeah, they, they definitely keep that in mind and same thing. I, and I saw, I saw this, which really bothered me um, after the movie was released and it was a blockbuster because it made over a hundred and some odd million yeah. in the first uh, week or two. But uh, the the gay couple, Little John and Big John, which yeah. were outstanding characters. Oh, and I love them. Yeah, probably yeah, probably my favorite uh, kill, other than Sandra and Lenny Clark. <laughs> hey, this is Lenny Clark from Boston. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, what a great character yeah. he played! Uh, there's a big guy with a mask in our bathroom. What's he want? Who gives a shit? Call the cops. <laughs> I thought that was such a funny line. Yeah, I love but, that. Uh, Big John and Little John, back to my point that I was uh, trying to allude to, <laughs> was uh, after they were killed and they were actually put in position like they were in a, in a photo, like they were in a photo uh, out in the woods or something, sitting with each other. Yeah. That's how Michael Myers left them. And uh the comments were, and I, I saw uh, a lot of them said, oh, they're homophobic uh, movie makers. No, they weren't. How many movies like that add gay couples in there? Exactly. And Mike Myers isn't homophobic by any means. He just <laughs> is going to kill everybody straight across exactly. the board. He didn't kill me, which I'm glad. Yeah, for now. <laughs> or he, he didn't kill the triplets, which is another good thing. And yes. uh, <laughs> But everybody else in the town uh, didn't fare as well. But uh, yeah, there was no homophobic nothing. And it's, I mean, that was one of the most diverse work uh, 
places I've ever had anything to do with, and uh, it well, was yeah. great. They ticked the box. Like, uh, they, they had, there was a few black people. There was white people. Yeah. As you said, there was gay people. Uh, sure. There was old. There was young. So it's... Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> and and a, another bunch of people said, I can't believe that they killed the firefighters. That's disgraceful. But I was thinking, well... It is a slasher film, and what you wanted to do? You didn't have any problem with that little kid with his grandfather getting slashed the heck up in the exactly. previous film, but you have a problem with firefighters. I mean, people will find anything to complain about, but uh, yeah, I, I found that pretty funny, and uh, it, it, you know, you, you come across people that would complain about free beer to picnic. Yes, <laughs> no, I totally get it. It's like it's a horror movie there's no agendas just watch it have a good time with the story and the deaths that's it yeah it's, that's it's a you know it's an old 1970s era slasher film and exactly. it's made its way to the 2020 and it stood the, the test of time and yeah. people were begging for them to push the envelope yeah. and they surely delivered on that and that's this is the result and then you still have people that complain about it, even though they're the same ones that asked for it. They... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I, get, I totally get it. It's a crazy world at times. Crazy world. Yeah. <laughs> but we we had a premiere at uh, one of the local theaters in my area, and uh, I was able to bring a group group of my friends in. And the movie theaters were, were actually not really packed, so most of the people that were in the theater were actually my personal friends that I brought in oh, okay. for the sneak peek. Uh, before the the film was regularly re released yeah and uh there was a guy who said oh so you were in that picture huh i said yeah i played the ventriloquist he says ah okay he said it was it was too violent i didn't care for it at all <laughs> i'm thinking well, well why would you go to a slasher film <laughs> that you know michael myers is going to kill eddie <laughs> and everybody in between and then complain about there's too much blood and gore <laughs> well, what do we expect i want people to die <laughs> yeah. but no blood just you know <laughs> oh, a weird comment that yeah but uh, they had the special effects uh christopher columbus i mean he's uh <laughs> he's done a, a outstanding job uh with all the special effects and everything he's done it was uh spot on he really pushed the envelope and uh yeah absolutely a lot yeah. of great stuff and i gotta say the uh uh diva taylor who uh he, she played the the poor lady with Lenny Clark. Oh yeah, she yeah. got the uh, fluorescent tube shoved in her throat. Oh, I mean, who the heck would could have thought that up? And then uh, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was horrendous to watch. I mean, amazing kill, but you know, it's, it's yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it was uh, <laughs> yeah. amazing to to watch, and uh, they really. <laughs> nailed it the special effects was uh, yeah. out of this world i agree and i'm hoping halloween ends tops this somehow uh yeah it will i haven't read the script but uh i know that uh, david gordon green and uh jason blum uh they're gonna do a bang up job because yeah. uh that's their and it's funny because uh before they did this uh, uh david gordon green was known as a comedy director oh, really yeah and uh i'm trying to recall the uh the name of the show that they do on a weekly basis it's uh fabulous gems or uh yeah the fabulous gems oh, I think it is. yeah yeah <clears throat> uh but that's a comedy and john goodman is in that um i'm real bad with names <laughs> you have to forgive me uh but uh yeah it's it's a great great comedy and uh if you get a chance, watch it. But that's what he does. That's it was he, he was always comedy wow, director, that's crazy, yeah. and uh, this was his first try at uh, uh, horror. And I think they more than nailed it. Twenty eighteen oh, yeah. Halloween was they hit it out of the park. Wow, that's amazing to to be good at comedy and hollow, uh, horror is that's just <laughs> that's just pure genius there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously we'd like to see in the next film so apart from obviously that are you working on anything at the moment well i did a uh, short film uh that was filmed in uh, philadelphia 
and uh, that doesn't even have a working title. Okay. And that's uh, uh, just a local uh, Philly production. And I'm not sure where that's going to be, if it's going to be in a uh, film festival or what have you. But yeah. I, I play a manager of a uh, convenience store that gets bullied by this uh, local gang of uh, thugs. Okay. And uh, that's what I'm working on. <clears throat> and uh, I was supposed to uh, play a detective in... Uh, we have this true crime series that uh, plays here in America. And uh, I think it was like the next 48 hours uh, is the title, but I'm not certain of that. Right. And what it is, is they do real true crime uh, <clears throat> investigations that have actually been solved. Okay. But what they do is they dr dramatize it and uh, they show you step-by-step step, uh, what happens. It's a recreation. And oh, nice. I was all set up to play the, the, the lead detective in that <clears throat> and uh, they took the measurements and everything <clears throat> excuse me they took the measurements for uh, my outfit I was supposed to wear a police uniform got all that done and they uh, called me back and said okay we're going to be filming in a week and you just have to get a COVID test and this was uh, back in uh, February yeah. so I said yeah no problem I went and got one it came back positive uh, and I called them up and said you know it came back positive and a lady said, yeah, we get that a lot. Um, just follow up your regular doctor, get tested again. So I got tested and sure enough, it, it came back positive too. So they had to replace me. And I was so bummed because uh, uh, it's about an hour and a half away from my house in Philly uh, right. that they filmed them. And uh, it would have been, you know, just a stone throw away. Whereas normally I have to go all the way up to uh, New York city from my house, which is about two and a half hours away, depending yeah. on traffic. Uh, oh. So you're, you figure five hours when two and from, yeah, about, total yeah. of five, yeah. whereas, you know, total of three driving back and forth, whatever. Oh, that's but, annoying, uh, huh? Yeah. It was a bummer about that, that COVID. And uh, yeah, unfortunately lost a lot of good people over COVID. A lot of actors yeah. and actresses, a lot of the old timers. Um, that's a shame. So anybody that lost a loved one to COVID, my heart goes out to them because, uh, it, it was a, a horrible atrocity that this happened. Yeah, it was a rough time for, especially for the Americans who were hit very hard, I suppose. Cause, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm glad we're, you know, getting closer, you know, closer and closer to a sort of normalized time period now. So hopefully, yeah. You and, and your... they have those other variants that are coming out. Oh, I know. And, uh, you In know, Africa. so. Yeah, that, that's real scary. Yeah. And it's bypassing the uh, immunization. But um, I would suggest for anybody, the anti-vaxxers are out there. And I, I know a lot of people have reasons not to take it. And yes, it is your body. It is your choice. But I would highly recommend getting immunized, immunized uh, for it. Yeah. Because you just never know. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. I was fortunate when I got my covid I didn't even know that I really had it. It was like a bad cold. I couldn't, it was tough breathing. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I didn't have it bad. It only hung around for about a week, but I've no a buddy of mine has it and he's been vaccinated and he went up in the hospital for over a week wow. on a ventilator. Yeah. Then he finally got off it and then wound up having a stroke the day he was supposed to leave the hospital, Jeez. wound up with a stroke and he la lost uh yeah, he lost all the, the use on his left side. So uh, he, he can't even talk uh, correctly and now has to go for the therapy for that. Jesus. Well, that's awful. So Sorry to Yeah, it's pretty serious. So that's why I said it's, uh, it's worth it um, to get immunized and, uh, you know, don't yeah. fool around with it. It's uh, no, not absolutely. a good thing. No. <clears throat> exactly. No, I totally agree. Um, so... Anything else you'd like to add? Well, the only thing I can uh, really add uh, that, <clears throat> you know, we covered pretty much everything, the actors and actresses. Uh, I didn't get to, to be on set with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, but oh, as I was, <laughs> as I was leaving, 
she uh, just came into the studio as oh. I was leaving and I got to, to meet her. So that was a, a thrill of mine. Nice. And uh, what a sweet lady. My goodness, they don't come any nicer. What you see on camera is what you get with Jamie Lee. Oh, Such nice a, a super nice yeah. lady. And uh, funny, uh, she was a pleasure to be around, uh, even though it was a very short window that uh, of opportunity that I had to yeah. sit with her. Uh, you know, she was uh, <laughs> drinking her tea or, or whatever it was in her cup. Um, <clears throat> but what a wonderful lady. She didn't know me from Adam and uh, <laughs> Adam. And uh, she treated me as if, you know, we had known each other for years. And, That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And I'm certainly thankful for the, uh, the gift of being in the film in the first place. Uh, yeah. Things like this generally don't happen to a guy from a small town like me that, uh, you know, my biggest thing was being on stage at the casinos. And like I said, I thought that was going to be it. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it really wasn't. And, uh, you know, I thank all my inspirations, uh, Paul Winchell, uh, of course, Edgar Bergen, uh, Jim Henson, uh, yes. Jim was a big influence, uh, you know, when I was in kindergarten, which is the, uh, here in America, the year before we go to first grade, they have a thing called kindergarten. It gets you ready. And, um, that was the year that Sesame Street had started. <clears throat> and uh, I was glued to the TV every single day that Sesame Street was on with the puppets. I really loved the puppets. And um, that's pretty much what helped uh, form my love affair of puppets. And as you can yeah. see, it's uh, <laughs> it's more of an obsession. Yeah. I mean, see some uh, friends hiding back there and old and new and i uh i keep about 20 of them uh, oh so this on is only it. just this is only half of them yeah this is only a small portion of me this is in my uh, personal studio here oh, wow. i have others that uh, are in my house and uh of course horace i uh, always keep with me because uh everybody uh I, I have friends that stop by with their kids and they want to get their picture taken because they uh, think it's the greatest thing in the world. That's the guy we saw in the movie. Or, <laughs> <laughs> and then I do uh, private appearances. Uh, in fact, I have one coming up in my hometown over the Christmas holiday. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> something that uh, it's, it's hard to get used to. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. I had to get, uh, it's hard to say, but uh, actual photos with my name on it. Um, and I have ones with studio, the studio name and uh, for, uh, you know, signing autographs for yeah. people. I just can't conceive that, but if they want it, they've got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. Again, you've obviously worked hard enough and, you know, you love what you do. So you deserve to be in this position. So, <laughs> oh, thanks. And I got to say, I really love, uh, you know, the opportunity of doing it. Cause I, I, like I said, I, I had so much fun uh, on set and hanging around with all these professionals and seeing how they filmed it. And uh, then all the interviews that I've done after the movie yeah. has been released, cause I had over a year of waiting time, actually went up to be about two years oh, yeah, true, of yeah. waiting time. And there was nothing. Uh, they did give me IMDB credit which got me a few little acting jobs here and there oh, okay. or what have you. But then uh, <clears throat> Carmela McNeil, she said, wait till the movie gets released. And it's going to change your life. And she was certainly right. Correct. It was like somebody slammed the gas on my phone, started ringing off the hook. Oh, wow. Um, newspapers and radio stations in my area were calling me up, uh, wanting me to stop in the studio for interviews and, uh, I've done uh, Jerry Petito show. Jerry is a great lady. And uh, I was on her, uh, her show in the studio at Hamilton radio. Wow. One of my buddies there. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's just been a whirlwind so far. And I still have a lot more uh, interviews to do. Usually a couple times a week, I'll put some time aside for yep. uh, uh, webcasts and uh, radio interviews. And it's, it's great. It's, 
probably the, the best time of my life. I was, was lucky enough to retire a year and a half ago. And oh, nice. uh, since the movie's been out, I haven't had a spare moment, but uh, I really love it because it keeps me busy. And uh, uh, I love meeting all the people and the fans, especially yep. uh, they're the ones that really make it worthwhile. And uh, I, I, I have to share this with you, but uh, I get requests for uh, autographs through uh facebook all the time and i've probably got about 500 and there's no way that i can fulfill the the autographs because it cost me a dollar 50 to to send out one of them pictures and i'd be in the poor house if i had to keep uh, sending them out but when i see people in public i will and i may may start doing a couple of the uh horror cons uh to get yeah, out cool. to, yeah. <laughs> but now the uh a lot of the people say um who's the one that did the voice for the dummy in the movie and i said well that was me and they 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 find it shocking that i'm actually a ventriloquist that i was actually <laughs> performing when i did i say yeah, that's all me on on film when you see the dummy singing that's me doing ventriloquism they said, oh we didn't we didn't know that we just thought you were a regular actor that was doing it and then somebody filled in the voice like uh, uh, you know cartoon yeah. i said no nah, that's that's my annoying voice you hear <laughs> <laughs> but yeah oh, i always wow. thought that was funny and i get that a lot because uh on facebook where <clears throat> you know i i usually accept anybody uh and unfortunately now i've got oh probably i've got 4500 friends and facebook only allows you to have uh 5, 000, so i'll uh, never get any... to that point so i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's out there that wants to be uh facebook friends i i get all these ones from indochina and brazil and everything i'd love to have more from uh, uh <laughs> the uh uh english speaking countries so that way i can converse with them yeah but, uh, uh, anybody in great britain you want to friend me go ahead we have uh about 500 more that I can accept. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Wow. And uh, my family is English. So uh, uh, even though my name is Dupree, uh, my uh, parents' actual last name is Welsh. Oh, wow. And, uh, they, they're from uh, England. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, Christ Church, in fact. Oh, C of E. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's, that's where they're all from over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> it's, not bad, it's not a bad British accent. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, one of the lower left side, you know, is uh, not yeah, as bad as Dick Van Dyke and uh, Mary Poppins, but <laughs> uh, it's just uh, mimicking uh, my relatives. That uh, uh, It's always... not a bad London accent, that. <laughs> it's hard to do a Mank accent, though, because that's very different, but, you know. Oh, yeah. The, the hard cockney, you know. Oh, God, yeah. The, yeah, that's hard to nail. I'm usually pretty good at accents, but the, that's that's. All right, it's a hard one. They stop doing that like that, you know. <laughs> Again, it's not too bad. <laughs> You'd fit in very well. <laughs> well, if I lived there, I would have to talk that way because uh, I wouldn't want anybody to uh, pick up on my uh, American accent. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just want to say a, a personal thank you again for being on the podcast twice. So I always appreciate <laughs> you being here. You're a great guest. Uh, no problem. I'm uh, happy to be a part and feel free to uh, ring me up anytime. Uh, I'm always around and uh, if I'm in an interview or something, uh, I always have the phone on silent and I always yeah. get back to you. I'm yeah, highly accessible. <laughs> I'll be happy to speak to you down the line again because again you're always great to talk to and you've always got great stories about Halloween yeah, kills sure. and whatnot. So yeah, I'll, I'll be releasing a few more down the line. Yeah, I look forward <laughs> to it. <them. laughs> yeah. And hopefully uh they'll bring me back for uh Halloween ends and yes. then I'll have even more stories. Uh, you get your head chopped off. <laughs> 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 that could happen. <laughs> or just use the dummy to just beat Michael up, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> smash him over the head with the uh, horace's uh, face <laughs> and mike is the true hero of the story yeah <laughs> uh, who knows <laughs> uh, well thank you mike for your time it's been excellent oh, you're to welcome you adam it's great talking to you and uh, thanks for having me on again you're very welcome uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll catch up down the line again all right take care take care bye <laughs> bye